Okay, uh, the next olefination reaction we have that's in that sort of Wittig reaction family is the Julia Lithgow olefination, uh, which is often just known as a Julia uh, olefination. Uh, and that's found in uh, Nance and Zweifel uh, here, Zweifel and Nance, on these pages here. Now, with the Wittig reaction, the simple Wittig gives mainly a Z alkene, and so what we'd like to have is a simple method that would give an E alkene. Now, you can do variations. You can do the Peterson olefination. You, you can do uh, the Schlosser modification of the Wittig reaction, which I didn't cover uh, in class. But uh, this, uh, Julia, is a simple alternative. Uh, it used to be um, quite cumbersome because it was a three-step procedure to work it up, but that's been simplified. So. It gives us a useful way to make the E alkene rather than the Z alkene uh, from the Wittig. So, wh what we do is we start with something like this. So, we react, we make something equivalent to an enolate really from the sulfone. This has a pKa. around 27 or so, depending how you measure it. Uh, so it's only a little less acidic than, say, an ester in forming something equivalent to an enolate, which is this carbon ion here, uh, that can do some resonance into the oxygens. Um, though that's probably very poor because of uh, this being a D to P overlap. Uh, so, This will then condense uh, to form uh, this salt, which would be equivalent to uh, the beta ene that we formed with the Wittig reaction. And this, uh, if we protonate it, does give us, in fact, uh, an alcohol. It doesn't, it doesn't break apart straight away like the Wittig does. So what we have to do, in fact, is do a workup Usually this is done uh, <coughs> when we form an ester here. And this acetate ester is a bit more stable to isolate than the alcohol would be. Um, and then we have to do a, a further workup on this. And that's usually done with um, sodium amalgam in mercury. Sodium amalgam is an alloy of sodium and mercury. It actually can be simply made by passing electric current through um, salt solution with a mercury cathode, and the sodium collects in that cathode. So <coughs> that's your reducing agent, and this will start to reduce this, and then it will fall off <coughs> and eliminate uh, acetate ion as well, and give us the <coughs> ZLT. Oh, sorry, the ELT. <coughs> there is an alternative workup. Um, Yeah, 
You use a base like DBU, uh, then SMI2. That's samarium iodide. We saw that with Barbier uh, coupling reaction. Uh, that's another useful reducing agent. So you can see it's a bit more hassle to get there. It does uh, produce predominantly the alkene. Okay, one thing we have to do is to be able to make these cell phones, and this isn't something you learned in Chem 342. So, uh, one way is to form the enolate equivalent, the anion uh, carbonion at this carbon. And so, we just use a strong base like LDA or KHMDS to form the anion here, and then do an SN2 reaction. to uh, alkylate on that carbon. So that's one useful way. We can also um, do other types of SN2 reactions, which I'll show next. We can also start with a primary alkyl halide with one more carbon in it, and uh, do an SN2 reaction. This is just like Williamson ether synthesis, except we have a sulfur instead of an oxygen. We form a thioether or a sulfide, which can be oxidized to the sulfone with something like MTPBA. And in fact, my, <coughs> uh, my students in my research group um, do a lot of these MCPBA oxidations quite regularly. It can be done with other things. Uh, sometimes hydrogen peroxide works as well. You can actually do a more direct SN2 reaction as well. Um, and use uh, in which case use a sulfinate this is not the same as a sulfonate it's a sulfinate there are only two oxygens and although I've drawn the minus on oxygen, which is probably where it mainly is, um, under the right conditions, this will alkylate on sulfur rather than on oxygen. So instead of getting a sulfinate ester, which would be if the R went here, uh, if it goes on sulfur, we get the sulfone directly. So there are three different ways to get to the compound. Uh, the book gives some other methods uh, besides this. So plenty of ways to make these sulfones. Now I mentioned that one of the hassles with it is this workup. You have to uh, form an acetate. Then you have to do this uh, messy reduction uh, to remove the sulfone group and cause the elimination to happen. Um, so this reaction was usually people's, not people's first choice, but okay, the Wittig failed, the Peterson was difficult, so maybe we'll try the Julia. Uh, but a modification has come along recently um, called the Kosciansky modification. So if we use this heterocyclic group, which is a phenyl tetrazole group in place of the phenyl. Uh, an another alternative is a benzothiazole sulfone. Uh, either of these 
work. This seems to be the more popular one, even though this tetrazole ring is a bit more expensive uh, than this. It seems to be, in the literature, the more popular. I haven't run this, but I'm guessing that this just works better, and I think it gives better selectivity. So this has become a popular one, and the nice thing is if you have something like this, now uh, you don't have to do the acetate workup, uh, and you don't have to do the uh, sodium and, and uh, amalgam reduction step. The, the uh, thing just falls apart, just like a Wittig reaction does, and you get the E alkene. So, get the ELP in one step, or at least one part, and um, so that's a lot more straightforward. Okay, the only other reagent uh, that I'd like to cover in this section is the uh, Tebbies reagent, which we will cover in class.